Hi everyone, welcome to Pens and Needles. In this episode, we're going to be looking at orange inks. Um, so I've done chromatographies of all of them. Here's a little sneak peek for you. And I've also tested out writing with them and swabbing them on three types of paper and writing with them with my Pilot Custom uh, 91 fine nib. I decided to use the same nib for all of the tests to really show off the way that the ink is different on the paper, as opposed to trying to show the way the ink behaves differently in different sized nibs. Uh, I might try to do that again, but because I was doing three inks and three papers, it just seemed like too much to add in three nib sizes as well. <laughs> So that's, that's why. This is the, the size nib that I use the most often, so this was going to be the most helpful review for me and for my purposes. All right, so we had the um, sketch ink, the Carmen Sketch Ink Roar and Klingner, um, and this is a nice, lovely shading pigmented ink. Um, also had the Sailor Gentle Kin Mokuse, and the Copper Noir by Montverde. All right, so keep watching to see how these inks behave on three types of paper, Muji dot pad, Tomoe River, and the Crown Mill laid paper. We can see from the chromatography that the Kinmokuse and the Copper Noir spread out quite a bit, but the Carmen being a pigment ink did not spread. We're going to start by looking at the Kinmokuse. Now this color is supposed to be the same shade of color of the leaves of a fragrant olive tree, which is the translation of the name. It was released as part of a set of seasons. So there are three other inks that you can get that are also sets of seasons. So here it is on the Tomoe River paper. Now, this Tomoe River paper is a bright white. Some Tomoe River paper you can get in cream if you prefer that. And the ink will look different. The writing experience was very smooth. Tomoe River paper is known for taking a long time for inks to dry, so just be aware of that. It's also, because it is so thin, can wrinkle from excessive amounts of ink. So you might see the swab is starting to warp the paper. Now for my little doodle drawing sample here, I am trying to replicate some of those leaves. Uh, I don't know if, if these are what the leaves look like on the olive tree. Olive leaves are usually not spread out like this. They're usually just one lobe. Uh, however, this is what was on the box. <laughs> So that was my reference point. Now here are the crown mill laid paper. And I hope you can see on camera the texture that you get from this paper. It does make writing a bit of a different experience. You have to go a bit more slowly, you get a lot more feedback, and drawing was a pain. Um, I would not recommend this paper for doing drawing or going over your letters multiple times uh, because as the paper gets wet it gets really toothy and sort of shades unevenly. You can see that in some of the leaves here. All right now onto the Muji dot pad. Since Muji opened up in New York City, both my fiance and I have been obsessed with this store. They have some really great products and I really like this dot pad. They're fairly affordable and really smooth, consistent paper. I'm just holding the edge of the paper down because as I'm trying to write on it, it wants to flip up. You can see the shading worked out really nicely here on the letters and the drawings. All right, so for the sketch ink. One thing you'll notice right away is that this ink is opaque. Um, at one point I was actually putting this pen uh, in the 
in the ink bottle like I just did and I was trying to shake out some of the, the bubbles that can be formed on the top of this ink and I was shaking pretty vigorously and hitting my pen against the side of the bottle and the nib fell into it and you could not see the nib, it was too opaque. So we had to empty the bottle of ink into a different container and fish out the nib and um, it, was, it was pretty funny. So here on the Tamoy River you can see quite a lot of shading, especially in that swab and it seems to darken as it dries very slightly. Because on the bottle the character Carmen is holding an orange umbrella, I decided to mimic that in the drawing here. And I added the porch umbrella that we have up on our little deck. And this umbrella is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it provides shade. It's a curse because it's constantly about to fall over and we're very concerned. <laughs> it's not a very secure umbrella. All right, you can really see the cross hatching in the laid paper in this swab. And I'm sorry that the umbrella got cut out a little bit for the porch umbrella in this part, but it's the same picture and we'll see the full image in just a second. So one thing that I noticed about the sketch ink is that because it's a lighter shade than the other inks, it seems to pop a little bit more on the Tomoe River paper as opposed to these creamier colored papers. But overall it had similar shading across all three. All right, now for the Copper Noir. Now this ink is not opaque, it's just very, very dark. This ink I think would be perfect for autumn. It's, it gets this sort of sense of antiquity with it. It's a very rich color. All right, so you can see with the Tomoe River paper, every sort of stroke that I made with the Q-tip for that swab is recorded in the ink. It dries in that pattern. I chose this quote, New York is a sucked orange from Ralph Waldo Emerson because I wanted a quote that would fit all three orange inks and I just love how sassy it is. Sometimes I feel that way about New York as well. Because this ink had such a aged quality to it, it really made me think of steampunk, which is both a sort of visual aesthetic, costumes and music, as well as a literary movement. One of my best friends actually had a steampunk themed wedding um, and I got the opportunity to make some of the costumes for her. She got married holding my cat, uh, which was a cat that was walked on a leash before it was cool. I, I think we had a really good time. It was a nice wedding. So yeah, so there's some gears and clocks which are uh, elements of that steampunk aesthetic. So the crown mill laid paper, again, is not the best for drawing. Um, it can be a very absorbent paper, so it doesn't give you a lot of leeway in terms of mixing or blending your, your shades. One of the nice things about the Muji dot pad is that you can use the dots as guides for your artwork, if you want.
So first I have my Muji dot pad and you can see this. I'll have a, you might have seen some of the, the close-ups already. Um, and the Muji dot pad is just really smooth and um, I really like it. I almost wish that they had a non-dot version, but I know dots are very popular right now. So um, it works out well. It's always a pleasant experience to write on. It doesn't bleed through too much. In fact, here you can you can only see sort of barely barely hints coming through, and it's not because the paper is oversaturated, but rather because the color is darker than the paper, and the paper is a bit thin. I also had my Crown Mill laid paper, which is my first sort of very fancy paper. It's the closest I can get to parchment paper, and this is what I typically use in uh, my nice letters. And um, so you know. Letters to mom, that kind of thing. <laughs> Holiday letters, birthday letters. If I have it on hand, I will try to use my um, crown mill laid paper. The downside is that I often run out and um, it's not like uh, you can just get it, you know, most of these papers you can't just kind of get at the pharmacy. <laughs> so, um, so when I run out, then I, I use other papers, but I do quite like this. The downside is it does have a bit of texture, which is also its upside. So it's not the smoothest writing experience, but it does, if you're, you know, if you're trying to fit a nice letter onto one page, it's manageable. It forces you to slow down and think about what you're writing a little bit and try to get the lettering nice. So I think overall it's a bonus. And then here is, this is gonna be very popular in the fountain pen world, is Tomoe River paper. And this is the, like the thinnest, <laughs> thinnest paper ever. This is in white, they also have it in cream. And um, people love this because it does not absorb the ink. So if you want to see sheen, if you want to see um, a lot of shading, this is a really great paper for that because the ink is just going to sit right on top and not get absorbed or pulled through. Really crisp lines on this as well. And this is also an incredibly smooth writing experience. It's important to think not just of matching your inks with your pens, which I know a lot of pen enthusiasts love to do. They'll get a orange colored pen and put orange ink in it, for example, but also to match the ink with the paper that you're using. Some inks just perform better on some papers than others. So finding the right match is part of the fun. All right, so we looked at these three inks. They all look really gorgeous on all three papers. Now, overall, I thought that the Copper Noir looked best on the Crown Mill paper. The creaminess and the texture of that paper just worked really well with the old-timey feel of that ink. And the sketch ink was fairly consistent in the way that it shaded from paper to paper, although as I mentioned before, it does seem to be brighter on the bright white of the Tomoe River paper. I really loved the uh, Kinmokusei on the Muji dot pad. I thought that it really popped in that arena and shaded really well. It, it seems to shade, at least in writing, better on the Muji dot pad than on the other papers. So each of the papers, you know, has its, has its time to shine, as it were. Um, I really enjoy all three of them. Um, I will say some slight negatives. So the uh, Copper Noir seems to create a crust of ink, or ink crud, as it's called, on the bottle. So that copper noir crud can get stuck on your fingers or hands and make a little bit of a mess. Just be careful of that. I'll say that the, the downside that I found for the sketch ink is that it is very stubborn. Um, so you need to shake it before you add it to things, just to make sure everything is, you know, continued to stay mixed up and does not settle. Um, and it gets very frothy, so that can be a little bit strange if you're used to traditional fountain pen inks, which typically do not froth, um, don't bubble on the top. And then once it's inside your pen, it can really kind of, it seems to stick a little bit more than some other inks that I've had. So when you're cleaning your fountain pen, you might want to pull out your, your bulb syringe to really uh, work it through. The only downsides that I could find with the Kinmokusei, um, and this might be because I'm biased and I really love the color, is that it is a bit expensive. It's more expensive than the other two. And it's advertised as having these really dramatic shading ranges. 
However, I found in practice, at least writing with the size pen that I use, uh, that the sketch ink was better at shading um, in the text than the Kinmokusei was. Also, the Kinmokusei is such a bright color, it might not be appropriate for work or you might not prefer that color. Um, I love orange and I love very bright, bold oranges, so this was perfect for me, but it might not be everybody's interest. All right, that's it for my review. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.